Happy Thursday. Another episode of the Scott Hamilton Show, week six edition, week six just around the corner. We've got the Red River rivalry, again, a mouthful of a game, but the last time that game will be played by two teams in the Big 12 Conference, Oklahoma versus Texas. Uh, Texas won 49-0 last year. Oklahoma looking for some revenge, but Texas might be the number one team in the country. So looking forward to that game. Uh, We've got Kentucky, Georgia. you got Bama, A&M. Not the drama we had last year, Saban versus Jimbo, Jimbo versus Saban, but the team that wins this game will be in first place in the SEC West. And the loser will have two losses. Forget about the college football playoff. But the game that has my attention, and it's a sleeper game. It's a sleeper game. Number 10, Notre Dame versus number 25, Louisville. Louisville undefeated. Haven't played a soul, but still undefeated is undefeated in the ACC. I'm wondering how this works out because I'm of the belief that Notre Dame is not only the best one loss team in the country, but I will say Notre Dame is better than some of the undefeated teams in the country. That's something we're going to discuss in just a few minutes with Mike Berardino of the South Bend Tribune and the Gannett Newspaper Network. He knows all things Notre Dame. I'm going to ask him that question and also dive deeper into what it's like to be at Notre Dame right now, year two under Marcus Freeman. Mike Berardino coming aboard. In just a couple minutes, Uh, some news items to get to. Let's get to this really quickly. Transfer portal. Transfer portal has been modified now, and I'm going to make sure that I read it so I don't get it wrong. It is now 30 days beginning the Monday after Selection Sunday, that being Selection Sunday for the college football playoff. So the the day after that, players will have a 30-day window in which they can utilize the transfer portal. Uh, Also, players who are in the college football playoff, they will be granted an additional five days in the month of January to see if they want to go somewhere else. And then there'll be a five-day window um, available to everyone in April, of course, after spring practice. Guys figure out if they're going to be able to get playing time. Guys figure out if they're going to be able to adapt to a new coach, whatnot. You get what I'm saying. So it's now a total of 45 days for the transfer window in football. Basketball, 45 days straight through the day after Selection Sunday for both men's and women's basketball. So that's an interesting modification there. We'll see how that works out. They're trying to do what they can, they being the powers that be in college athletics, to rein in the portal. Uh, Government trying to rein in NIL, which that's going to be an arduous process. That's another topic for another time. But at least they're trying to move in the right direction. Uh, Interesting news out of the Southeastern Conference. Ole Miss coming off that fantastic win over LSU. High-scoring game, lots of yards, lots of points, just insanity uh, in Oxford, Mississippi. Ole Miss fines $75,000 for fans throwing debris on the field. Remember that awful call? um, I think it was a touchdown. They looked at the replay. Shouldn't have been a touchdown, but they called it a touchdown for LSU, whatever. The fans got ticked off, threw debris onto the field. Ole Miss going to have to pay 75 k to the Southeastern Conference now. Also find 100000 when the fans rush the field after the, after the game. So $175,000, that's the hit for Ole Miss to take a win against its rival LSU. But I'm sure they're more than willing to do that. But, hey, is, are there going to be field stormings this weekend? Are there going to be fan bases throwing stuff? That's the beauty of college football. You never know what's going to happen week in and week out. And that includes this Notre Dame-Louisville game. Again, Louisville 5-0. and Haven't played anybody, really. They're coming off the three-point win against NC State at NC State last week. Really ugly game. Just an ugly game. But a win is a win is a win. Will Louisville upset the Irish? Or will the Irish validate my belief that they are not only the best one-loss team in the country, but better than some of the undefeated teams? It's one of the things we're going to ask Mike Berardino, South Bend Tribune on the other side. It's the Scott Hamilton Show. Stick around. We'll be right back. Hello, sports fans. Fan stream sports. Hi, golfers. IndyCar Tim here. I want to talk to you a little bit about Golf Central just, Magazine. It's, it's not a just a golf magazine. It's the magazine for everything. Turf, travel, philanthropy, and lifestyle. Head over to GolfCentralMag.com and check out the latest issue. Some of the regular features in Golf Central Magazine. The Golf Bachelorette of the Month. The Golf Bachelor of the Month. The Golf Cart Girl of the Month. Golf History. Grip it and sip it. So head over to GolfCentralMag.com. It's free. It's the magazine for everything. Turf, travel, philanthropy, and lifestyle. Golf Central Magazine at GolfCentralMag.com. We'll see you there. All right, guys. Time to talk a little bit about turf life. You've seen the hats on our heads. You've been or seen the video of the studio. You've seen that the decals are all over the place. 
Turf Life. Man, it's the brand that salutes the consumer and industry players everywhere whose lives involve turf. What does that mean? That means if you play or have a business or, you know, maybe you're a sports educator, you're going to be on turf at some point. So you live the turf life. So go ahead and tell everybody you live the turf life by having your turf life window decal or, you know, the hat or the keychain or the something. Along that lines, just go to turflifeclub.com and become a turf head. That's what it's called when you live the turf life. You're now a turf head. And you can go join the club today, and snag that window decal, or snag any other special turf life accessories, and go over there to that website, which is turflifeclub.com, and get your stuff and show everybody that, man, I'm all about that turf life. And then you just kind of raise your coffee mug at them and go, yeah, turf life, baby. That's what it's about. And then that's the end of the commercial. Ding. That means it's done in microwave talk. Hello, golf friends. It's IndyCar Tim from From the Rough. I want to take just a minute here and tell you about our new friends over at Orca Golf. They make high-quality PGA Tour-grade golf bags, and they're the best in the business. They're the real deal. They're the best bags I've ever seen. They even designed a bag for the Golden Bear himself, Jack Nicklaus. Head over to orca-golf.com and pick up a great bag from their catalog or let them customize one just for you. You can use your own custom colors, your own logo, you name it. You work with actual designers, and nothing goes out without the approval of founder Erica Bennett. She's just brilliant. Visit orca-golf.com, that's O-R-C-A-golf.com, and use our promo code DSP10 for 10% off and free shipping. Do it today. Orca Golf, best choice in game. Guys, let me tell you about Bay Area Modern Medical Center. Are you experiencing low sex drive, fatigue, hot flashes, moodiness, and you just don't feel like you have the vitality you once had? You're not just getting old, it's likely low testosterone. Studies over the last 20 years show a shocking decline in younger males aged 16 to 39. Older men have seen a sharp decline as well. Do something about it. Go see my friend Christopher Lugo at Bay Area Modern Medicine. Testosterone replacement is not a frivolous treatment. It takes a professional targeted approach that focuses on total body wellness, vitality, and emotional stability. Not a one-size-fits-all approach like many clinics use. They will monitor your blood work and adjust your treatment as needed for optimal results. Call 844 977 3477 or go to bammc.com. Hey, listeners, make sure you check out the brand new Fan Stream Sports in studio text line. You can reach us during any of our live shows or 24 7 at 214 937 0569. That's 214 937 0569. Text us 24 7 day or night. And we'll reply to you and make you part of the show. Coming back at you now. More fan stream sports. Um, getting closer to week six, college football. Uh, the ranked matchups against ranked matchup, ranked team versus ranked team in a ranked matchup. Make that of, the, of it what you will. Not as many as we had um, last week. There is one, though, on the schedule that's got my attention, and it's Notre Dame at Louisville. That's a 7.30 kickoff Eastern time on ABC. Notre Dame right now at six and a half points. Notre Dame coming off that win at Duke. And the week prior to that, that narrow loss to Ohio State. And I, I've got this contention I'm going to make, and I'm going to run it by our guest. I will say that Duke, or Notre Dame rather, easily the best one-loss team in the country, and I think they're better – than some undefeated teams. We're going to see what our guest thinks, see if he agrees. He covers all things Duke for the Gannett newspaper chain, uh, South Bend Tribune, you name it. He's Mr. Notre Dame. Mike Berardino, welcome aboard. Do you agree or disagree? Notre Dame, the best one team, one loss team in the country. Well, I I do have to, uh, I don't know about Mr. Notre Dame, but thank you uh, for the introduction. Thanks for having me. Um you know, I, I'm an AP voter. Uh, this the second year doing that thankless task, and and so I have them. Uh, I moved them up from 13 to 11. Um, you know, I don't. I, I think it's important to to keep the two lost teams even around. I have Clemson in there still uh, around 20, 
uh, I have LSU in there for the moment, but um, I, I'd, I would rather see teams uh, play somebody uh, and perhaps lose narrowly and to lose on the very last play uh, on defense is narrow against Ohio State so yeah I think I think Notre Dame is um, is not uh, cannot be eliminated from the playoff discussion just yet you know before we get to strictly on Notre Dame for a minute let's expand on being an AP voter I was an AP voter for I think seven years and there's only like 61 of them I think now 62 something like that and it is a thankless task because once the college football playoff rankings come out Nobody cares. Nobody, right. nobody cares about the AP Top 25. But, Mike, I'm, I'm of this belief. I think that the AP Top 25, specifically the preseason poll, it is one of the most dangerous things in college football because it sets the perception. And it's hard to shake that perception once the games actually get played and you see for yourself, well, this isn't number 12. This isn't number 20. And, and that's proven in the fact, and I think it was 1990 or 91, Mike, I'm sure you'll be able to give me correct information, it's, it was either 1990 or 91 when Georgia Tech won national championship. Yeah. That was the last team to be unranked in the preseason to win the national title. If you're not in the mix from the get-go, you got no shot. What's your take? I agree that uh, it's it's just for amusement. The AP poll and the coaches poll, for that matter, just for should just be for amusement and uh, conversation. And uh, I, I don't think it's taken very seriously. Certainly by the playoff committee, which doesn't have to get together until October, until Halloween, basically. But maybe they should dress up for that. <laughs> and uh, I think they should have to. And uh, I don't think Vegas cares much about it or anybody else setting lines. So um, it's just it's just um, an exercise. And it's also an exercise in uh, uh, self-flagellation, I suppose, or, the, or allowing the, everyone on social media to flagellate us. Uh, and, uh, it's just silly, uh, with, the I, I don't want to sidetrack us, but to do it for seven years, uh, that's, um, that's, uh, superhuman. I don't see, uh, I mean, I, I really didn't want to do it a second year, but, uh, um, they, you know, it's kind of a, a, a public service. Ralph Russo is a powerful man. He, he has a way of persuading you to do these things. I, I would get up on Sunday mornings at five 30 in the morning and I would go over every box score and I would have um, two two lines going. I would have my top 25 from the week prior and then I would start constructing and I would have the results of every team and then I would check out all the box scores. I, I did take it very seriously and a lot of yeah, folks yeah. don't. I know, I, and I'm not going to name names, I know a Power 5 coach, a successful Power 5 coach whose daughter filled out his coach's poll every week. Oh, I don't think any, I don't think any of the coaches um actually do the uh clicking and dragging i think it's uh it's sid people for the most part um and perhaps family members but uh when it comes to the media which uh you know we're if you had a night game as i did the last two weeks um you know uh, i may have been up at 5 30 because i was still working on the story from the ohio state game and then you you, know, you grab a quick cat nap and then you try to uh, do something legitimate with it. And you're right. I, one of the things that can get you in a, in a hole with that on the wrong side of Reddit and their little, uh, <laughs> and their little uh, team uh, logo coded thing so that the people can know, you know, exactly which team it is. Cause if you just put the words and the letters, they, they wouldn't figure it out. But um, uh, you know, as, as I do go by my own, carryover from the previous week and then I adjust within that and so I don't I don't ever feel like I was way off or wrong I mean because again it's for amusement so over time the the uh I guess the moving away from the mean what I I would say it's you know um fine to be to be that far but to rank it in terms of uh the voters being uh right on what AP came Mm -hmm. up with the crowdsourcing within 60 people or uh, to be way down at the bottom, so to speak, because you're an independent thinker or whatever. It's just an exercise. I have Notre Dame at 11, um, and uh, you know, let's let's see what happens. I don't have Louisville in there this week, for instance, uh, but that doesn't mean anything. They're on the they're on the they're on deck. I'd say I'm, I'm also receiving consideration from groggy sports writers. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what a sick puppy I am. I still do it. 
Wow. Even though I don't have to, but I still yeah. do it. And I actually yeah. have Notre Dame number nine right now. Okay. I have Notre Dame number nine right now, Mike, because I, what I saw against Duke and specifically what I saw against Ohio State, I, I'm of the belief that Notre Dame is the most is more well rounded than some of the undefeated teams. I I'm trying to find a flaw in this team, and the the only flaw that I can really find, Mike, is that it's still trying to polish itself. That everything is there on all sides of the football, but there's still some little edges they're trying to grind away. Would that be a fair assessment? Sure, uh, I think so. I mean, I, I can't believe you're still doing that. I think uh, <laughs> I, uh, I don't know what to do. That's a question for your therapist. But I think, uh, you know, it's it certainly helpful to, to, to stay on top of things, no doubt. And I know who to go to now on on, sat, on Sunday morning at 1030 when I'm just stuck. You know, I just don't, I want to, I got Fresno in there. You know, I feel good about that. But, you know, am I really sliding? I don't know. <laughs> Iowa or something, you know, I, I'm calling you up. I'm just calling you up. I, and that's what's going to happen. But Notre Dame is like many teams. Uh, uh, you know, they, they've had, they had their, um, their run up to the actual schedule. They had kind of a preseason, you know, cause Navy has turned out to be worse than the typical Navy team, uh, in a first, uh, under a first year head coach. And, um, Tennessee state first time ever Notre Dame's played an FCS um, or an HBCU team and Tennessee State, uh, great history, but not very good right now. NC State is down. I think we can agree on that. Even on the road, NC State and that's who Louisville just beat. And that was an unwatchable game. You know, you talk yeah. about having a Friday uh, in, in the triangle and waiting for Notre Dame to play the next night and tried to watch it and you know, to see what needed to be. You know, I, I'd just seen NC State. Terrible, terrible game on both sides. And Brendan Armstrong, benched off of that which is stunning but that tells you that it's it's not a given when you even if you're a four-time captain with 10,000 passing yards uh the, being a grad transfer you've got a lot of bonding to do Sam Hartman's been able to do it but Armstrong hasn't even with Robert and I there and in Central Michigan actually of those uh you know it's actually uh, on, on the Sagarins I still look at Jeff Sagarin's thing I think it's useful I think he's a uh, uh great uh, sports person in the history and I still doing it and an Indiana guy and Central Michigan actually 102 in the Sagarins Navy 114 and Tennessee State 195 he's got Ohio State number two uh, and I believe I have Ohio State number two also uh, um, that was a heck of a game with Notre Dame I have the Buckeyes at a uh, number four Okay. Well, there you I, go. no, yeah, I actually have Michigan one, Texas two, Georgia three, Ohio State four. Yeah, see, that's you know, I, I, I for amusement, it's good. I there's people out there with Washington one, you know, uh, whatever. I have to, to each their own. I mean, there's no wrong answer really, as long as you're trying, and um, as long as you have a you know have a point and uh, an angle to it, and uh, you know, I, I do think that you can have information overload. I have to believe you've mm-hmm. reached that point. If you're going, if you're, if you have every, do you still look at every box score of the? I, of I the, check, I check them all out. I mean, yeah. yeah. And what, um, what's an example of something that, uh, I mean, you want to know what's fluky, I suppose, and those things, if what, but you really can drive yourself batty on that now. Uh, <laughs> and the other thing I think it's important <laughs> to point out is that, I, and tell me if you agree with this, um, this concept. And, and maybe our directions from AP, from Ralph Russo and, and the AP folks are, it's a little confusing on this, but uh, the idea that, yes, we're supposed to take head-to-head matchups into account, um, but there are plenty of examples, I can go back to last year, um, where a narrow victory by a team that overall body of work was better than the team, you know, it stumbled against. Uh, I'm thinking Alabama and Tennessee mm-hmm. last year that I that I certainly uh, brought a, a, the wrath of Knoxville upon mm-hmm. myself. I, I I believe that there's that wasn't the only one. There's a there's a good five or six of those um, among teams that were kind of circulating in the top 25. And if if just because you lost to uh, team A lost to team B, team B's always got to be ranked ahead of team A. That's that doesn't make sense. I, I don't buy that either, Mike. I'm glad I'm glad we agree on that. I mean, the eye test tells me a lot. 
consistency over the course of the season. And and you know as well as I do, a team can have a bad night simply because that is the one team that it's a bad matchup. It's yeah. no different than basketball, man. Matchups matter, and that and that could be the case for uh, an Alabama and Tennessee in 2022. Here's 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 the one that really got me. Then we're going to talk about Notre Dame. Okay. Here's the one that really got me about Georgia. The fact that Auburn could go 11 of 20 passing with no touchdowns and an interception, 88 yards passing, Mike, but they were able to get 219 yards on the ground, five yeah. yards a carry. That's not elite, Mike. That tells me that Georgia is not an elite football team, and they need to think the scheduling guys that they're playing Kentucky this week in Athens, not Lexington. Yeah, yeah, that Kentucky woke up. Um, no, it's a, that's a good point. There's some certain fundamentals: run, being able to run it when they know you're you're going to run, being able to stop the run. Uh, uh, it doesn't matter if it's a short yardage or not; just being able to throttle somebody that way. Um, those are, you know, some certain championship uh, hallmarks, and and uh, yeah, I have Georgia one just be, largely because I had them one going into the season out of respect, and of course you know they're you look at recruiting rankings, and there's no perfect way to do it in August. That things right. do like August August first. I mean, it's absurd. Yeah. But um, if you're going a preseason ranking, and then say, oh, then here's the other thing. They're like, well, don't be married to it. You know, then use the eye test. Well, nobody really plays anybody for mm-hmm. the whole duration of September you know it's there's not a whole lot of data points that you can drop from um knowledgeably or or, or, or read much into it and Notre Dame included so to me this, this uh, a lot of the seasons really didn't start until third week of September and I suppose I could be better at at uh you know uh, recency bias it seems like those mm-hmm. polls everybody wants that well you, it just happened so that's more important than anything that happened four weeks ago and I really, I really uh, try to push back against recency bias and try to, again, save. I just do this in a Google Doc now, but I, uh, but I don't, I don't have the, I don't have the uh, staffing that you have there to put together. <laughs> I don't have, I don't have all the analytic. Uh, the I have a people. grease board and a notepad. You got, you got no, you got, you got I'm everything in a closet. there. Yeah, in a closet. I I have a working internet connection, and uh, usually, and I try to uh, skip around there and make sure that I remind myself, you know. And I also like to have the, you know, the. I think it's important to know the the quality of loss. Um, mm-hmm. I think that could. I I I just think it's too this idea of oh we're down to X number of unbeaten's. Well, so what? You know, like Texas was a four loss team last year. Uh, by mid season almost. And I had, I always had Texas uh, higher pro I would imagine than any other voter uh, because I had, res- those are four quality losses as I recall, um, mm-hmm. including a close one to Alabama at home. And uh, I think there'll probably be a team like that this year. That's just loaded with talent. And um, Oh, by the way, Texas this year, um, you know, looks awfully good. They, they do look awfully good. And we're going to put a pin in this part of the conversation, but I'll leave you with this thought. I don't hate you for having Georgia number one because there is no clear number one team in the country right now. We could probably take one through whatever and say that's the number one team in the country and nobody could really dispute it. Uh, just a few more minutes to Mike Berardino of a uh, Gannett newspaper, South Bend Tribune, Mr. Notre Dame. Uh, I, well, here's my question for you. Here's my question for you. And we're both very familiar, obviously, with Sam Hartman for his stops at Wake Forest now at Notre Dame. I, I watched Sam Hartman play quarterback at Notre Dame after watching him play quarterback at Wake Forest for so long. And and he was marvelous with the Deeks, but I can't help but to think this guy was born to be the quarterback of the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. What's it been like watching him get integrated into this offense, but not only, not only into the offense, not only into the team, Mike, but to really absorb the Notre Dame culture and the Notre Dame tradition. How is he being received in South Bend and around the world by people who follow Notre Dame? Well, uh, uh, very well. Uh, it's, um, you know, he seems to have uh, a gift for saying uh, things that people want to hear. Uh, he's, he can give you the the, the, the winning quote, the, the money quote when he wants to. Um, he's got, you know, you, you know, it. He, he's, he's always been very kind. He wants to go into broadcasting eventually, and we'll see how long a pro career lasts. But, um maybe longer than it should because of those intangibles because of his poise and and his accuracy largely and what he has here now is uh 
generally speaking, he has uh, uh, faith in the line, the block that's that's protecting him. He's got faith in the and the weapons to get separation. His his skill people. He's got a running game. He's got a defense. He's got help. At times, he had help. Eleven win season in twenty one at Wake Forest. That wasn't just Sam Hartman, but there had to be other times. And I'm thinking back to the to the Louisville game last year in the third quarter. Um, six turnovers in one quarter uh, for Sam Hartman. Three strip sack fumbles, three interceptions, two pick sixes. Uh, he has yet to throw an interception here. Now he's throwing passes that should have been intercepted. Mm-hmm. Let's face it, one of them at the very end against Duke, but he got an, he got another chance, and then it became legendary. The other thing about Sam Hartman is uh, because. Uh, he's he's got he's he's got a good uh, sense of 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 timing and and um, just pr- productivity. He's fun to watch. You know, he, uh, he's good looking guy. All that <laughs> stuff. He's he's um that's that's that brings in the casual fan. Um, is it? Uh, uh, I guess he he's, he inspires amnesia or something because uh, he's he's only one of he's five. You know, he's got thirty two career wins including Wake Forest, 32 and 19. Well, there was a guy here just a few years ago who went 30 and 5 as Notre Dame's starting quarterback, got him to the playoff twice, and that's Ian Book. And people Mm -hmm. around here, media included, it seems, have totally forgotten that it's not like – and I've heard former – I've interviewed players, that player, former player, they're like, we finally have a quarterback, you know? Well, I know Drew Pine and Tyler Buckner disappointed you in some way Mm -hmm. just last year. But Jack Cohn wasn't too bad either. Come from from Wisconsin, eleven wins in twenty one, and Ian Book from eighteen to twenty, essentially one start in seventeen, got you thirty wins, and uh, really at one point it was thirty and three, and then they lost the ACC. They weren't good enough to play with Clemson, and they weren't good enough to play with Alabama. No shame in that. And then you go back, Jimmy Clausen, decade and a half ago, Brady Quinn, you know, almost two decades ago. But uh, those pretty good college quarterbacks. Um, so Sam is, I guess the hunger for, um, what he can bring and the, just the, just the excitement, the swashbuckling, yeah. can we say swashbuckling I mean, if the fourth and 16, you run for 17, what is swashbuckling? If not that, um, it's inspired amnesia. And I, so I, I think that's, that would be unfortunate because it's not like Notre Dame has been in the wilderness with no quarterback, but everything else ready made champion. They've had some pretty good uh, leaders of the offense along the way, faces of the program, um, and now they have another. He's he's no Ron Paulus. I'll leave it at that. Right? Well, that goes way way. That's that's a Bino Bino. Ron Paulus is still Three here. Eisman's. By the way, right? he, yeah. he's what's still he here? He's a, a he's associate athletic director and he's director of football operations here. And uh, he was on staff even under Charlie Weiss. He was a quarterbacks uh, coach. Um, Back in the Clawson era, mm-hmm. but he's still around uh, regularly. So you know that's another thing. You know those guys, those former quarterbacks. Um, you know, Sam got to meet Joe Montana in Ireland with the help of Guinness, and you know, paying Joe to 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 promote Guinness. And and he's got Brady Quinn on speed dial. He hung, he hung out with Clawson in L.A. over the summer. He's got Steve Berline. He's met. Um, there's a. Uh, there's no shortage of uh, of that pipeline. Uh, the guys who know what it's like to play quarterback at Notre Dame who are welcome. I'm sure Ian Book would be happy to speak with him, but would probably remind him that he did have a 30 and five record as starting quarterback and wasn't so bad. And and you generally was in the top 20 in passer rating. I like I enjoyed covering Ian Book and and I that that bit of it that little bit of amnesia uh, annoys me. And that's 30 wins in a shortened COVID season, right? So well, it could have been more. That, that's right. That's right. Okay. He is the winningest quarterback. It, this is accurate. He is the winningest quarterback in Notre Dame history. Ian Book, it's not very good, not very good in the pros, but he was really good in the college level. Well, Mike, look, before we let you go, and I'm I'm of the belief that the path is there for Notre Dame to make the playoff this year. We touched on it earlier. I think they're the best one loss team in the country, and I think that could actually get them in what they've got in front of them and the way they did look in that one loss. But beyond that, going into 2024 in this brave new world where the SEC and the Big Ten and the Big 12 are going to be popping at the seams, what is Notre Dame Notre Dame's place 
in that brave new world, not only with bloated conferences, but we'll have the expanded playoff. I, I know that it says it wants to keep its independence. And right now, financially, that seems feasible because of its deal with NBC. But do you see a tipping point where Notre Dame finally relents and says, we've got to get a home. We've got to be all in somewhere. I don't get that feeling now. I don't have that vision. Um, you know, Jack Swarbrick, the AD, about to hand off uh, by the by the spring to Pete Bavacqua, and uh, both were on the sideline there at the end in Durham when Notre Dame was was making the comeback to win it. But um, it it does seem like with twelve uh, teams in the playoff coming up, um, there are more chances for the independent path to work. Uh, the thing that would work against Notre Dame there and and Swarbrick's on record being okay with it is is always having to play that extra game because you don't have a conference championship so you're in but you're never going to be one of those top four that gets to sit at home the first weekend let everybody else beat each other up what's in favor what's in Notre Dame's favor often I would imagine if it can be in that regularly is is a is a home game in December um, ideally against the team you know, from a warm climb, and then uh, that's that's a that's a big advantage. But you still have to play that extra game, and then turn around and and play the the, the quarterfinal game. So, um, I, I I think they've got it structured. They've kind of shown that uh, they're they're just fine with this. Uh, uh, what could blow it up, I suppose, is if the ACC and we who, again, who, I'm out of the prediction business on what conference uh, futures look like. But right, Clemson's supposedly on its way out and mm-hmm. that's why you had wait that's why you had to welcome their friends from the west stanford and cal into the atlantic coast conference and of course southern miss or southern methodist um so you know death penalty to acc that's just a, a great <laughs> stuff and uh i you know the one thing that's one there is one notre dame team sport that's that's in the big 10 already and that's hockey they're very mm-hmm. good at hockey and they've they've used that path for quite a while but i don't get the feeling even with the nbc synergy and the and the and the, the way saturdays are lining up for big 10 dominance going forward the big two big 10 and sec eventually uh i still think that the lore centuries worth of lore and and achievement largely in that period uh, and eyeballs. It always comes back to eyeballs. That Ohio State game, right? It's got the final drive. They put it out there. 14.5 million people watching the final drive. Um, the game at Duke the other day, one of the top three so uh, of, of recent vintage. So there, if Notre Dame's on, the, the helmets are shiny. And the names, <laughs> uh, the coaching names, you know, you win the championship, you get a statue. No statue yet for Marcus Freeman. No statue for Sam Hartman. Um, yet. But it is some yet. It's just a matter of time, according to the fan base. I, they may be out there working on it right now. I'll have to go check. Uh, and we're getting the alerts, the uh, international. Yeah, alerts. what's that so all pe- about? People will know when we recorded this. Look at there, things are falling down now. It's a. <laughs> <laughs> this I is... told you, my fancy studio with the padding is falling. How about down. that? It's that's that's. Uh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. I, I feel like Lou Holtz. <laughs> Oh my um, God. I didn't even get into Lou Holtz reference here, but uh, uh, what a what a what a recent uh, run for him! What a fortnight for for, for uh, Lou Holtz! Well, I'm, I'm not even going to do my bad impersonation. Can you no. hear me? It, it knocked my I, microphone down. I hear you just fine. That was the second time. I thought it was an emergent test of the emergency broadcasting system. In the event of an actual emergency, it'll it's be emergency. important that you get the heck out of there. He's Mike Berardino. <laughs> Follow him on Twitter at Mike Berardino. Mike, before I let you go, what are you what are you working on other than your comedy routine? Yeah, well, I was taking a nap earlier, and then I had to wake up from the nap, and then and obviously, and I'd like to go take uh, the second part of the nap. But uh, we got a story on uh, uh, tight end Mitchell Evans, who's had two straight career games, and his sister plays volleyball at University of Georgia. She's uh, his older sister is excellent at volleyball, and we'd had a nice conversation today. Uh, Casey Evans um, filled me in on the family uh, dynamic. So I'll be writing that up for the South Bend Tribune uh, after the second part of my nap. Did, did you get a chance to ask her her thoughts on the Nebraska thing with the volleyball? Oh, how they played the volleyball in the football stadium. That's yeah. an excellent question. 
And I did not. I asked her, I was trying to uh, start a little Brock Bowers uh, controversy. I asked if, you know, I, is there, I asked her about that. And uh, she, she has a teammate. She doesn't really know Brock Bowers that well, but a teammate is in a class with Brock. And I just wondered if there was some smack talking about the Mackey Award. Not that I think uh, Mitchell Evans is quite ready for the Mackey Award, but maybe in 24 he would be because uh, by that time Brock would be counting his millions in the NFL. But uh, no, that's an excellent question, and that's why I forgot to ask it. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, Brock Bowers might be more associated with something called the Heisman, but we'll talk about that another Whoa. time. My, I can't say who I'm voting for, Mike, but... Heisman! He's the best Whoa. player in the country. That's interesting, because uh, I haven't... You're the first one I've heard to connect him with that this year uh there's not enough passing stats uh, out there for you to be wowed uh, by there's the, so uh, many i'm under yeah. i'm just like it's almost too much and after watching him against auburn yeah. and all the things i mean yeah. whenever they need him he's there he's wow. there and he, you can't match him up i mean he he doesn't have a position mike he's positionless yeah oh. he's just a football player and the heisman trophy by definition is the outstanding football player of the year did you consider uh Michael Mayer on your on your list last year? No, no, because he was. <laughs> I was he, still starry eyed by all the passing stats last year. That's I guess Michael Mayer. I had Hendon was, Hooker. Hendon Hooker was one up until he got hurt, and then I yeah. had Max Dugan. With Max Dugan got my Heisman vote last year. Wow, no, that was no, he certainly was worthy. But Mayer was was as essential to Notre Dame, especially any third down situation, red zone situation. Mm -hmm. He was constantly double, if not more. He's going to be drawing that, that cloud coverage. I mean, you could. He was absolutely the guy that defenses were aware of, and he had a monster year, uh, but uh, and a heck of a blocker. But I give you credit for outside the box thinking. And now, when Brock Bowers gets that one Heisman vote, I'll I'll know ahead of time. That You'll, before Scott. I post my ballot, you go, oh, "Hey, that clown, no, that guy, not, no clown." I don't. Hey, I don't call anybody a clown <laughs> after. After what I went through on Twitter last year, they've, there's all kinds of that me those memes. But uh, I'm not no. clown clown pointing. But uh, uh, no, he's very good, Brock Bowers. And uh, but I, uh, that's I Mitchell didn't Evan. have I didn't have um, and I'll tell this story again. I didn't have Baker Mayfield on my ballot at all, hmm. and I had to go on Fine Bomb to defend it. And my phone is blowing up. I'm the most hated guy in Oklahoma. But I couldn't do it because the number one thing is sportsmanship. And it That's had right. nothing to do with the arrest or anything like that because he, he seemed pretty contrite about that, even He's though he was on video. Uh, it was in uh, – where was it? was in Arkansas or somewhere? Wasn't was it in Ohio. Columbus? Didn't he do that at Ohio State? Oh, no, he spiked the flag at Ohio State, yeah. but he got yeah. arrested that spring. Oh. Okay. And then he taunted Kansas, and then he taunted Baylor, and he got suspended for the first uh, series and had his captaincy stripped for his yeah. last game. And I yeah. said, how can that guy be a Heisman winner? How can him, I mean, his numbers are unassailable. His ability to win games were un, unquestionable, but I, I couldn't do it. So, yes, when Brock Bowers gets a vote, and I'm not allowed to say because the black helicopters will start swirling, you could say, oh, I know who did that. <laughs> yeah, okay. Do, Mike, hey, listen, it's been a blast. I'm afraid this thing's going to fall in on me at any moment. Better seek shelter. Seek shelter. You can follow him on Twitter, X at Mike Berardino. Mike, you're the best, brother. Let's do it again soon. Sounds good. Thank you, Scott. Welcome back. And a just really interesting conversation with Mike Berardino. Mike's been a journalist for a long time, uh, covered Major League Baseball for quite a few years, just and a really good dude. I enjoy his perspective on Notre Dame, especially when we talk about the quarterback position and we talk about Sam Hartman. And I, I really am of the belief that Sam Hartman was born and bred and just brought to this earth to be the quarterback at Notre Dame. And we saw him do such wonderful things at Wake Forest and really helped take that program to some incredible heights during his time as the quarterback at Wake Forest. But things just seem different now at Notre Dame. It just seems different wearing that golden helmet, playing in front of touchdown Jesus and having that massive audience week in and week out, regardless of who you're playing. So it's just the way he carries himself. And of course it helps when you're a 60 or senior. No doubt that's going to play a role in it as well. But the way he carries himself is just really impressive. And the scramble he had to keep the game going for Notre Dame when they were trailing, they had that 95-yard drive they went on to seal the win at Duke last week. And it was extended thanks to a scramble by Sam Hartman on fourth down. It, just, it was really, 
really impressive. But equally impressive, and I haven't really said enough about this, Wallace Wade Stadium, ESPN game day, going to Duke for the first time ever. Wallace Wade Stadium, which has had some work done over the few years to bring it into a more modern, modern era. I was impressed. And it was already one of my favorite stadiums in the country. Definitely my favorite stadium in the ACC. I'm going to throw that out there. It's a it's a wonderful facility with a lot of history. Played the Rose Bowl there in 1942, right after Pearl Harbor. Uh, it's it's sunken in. It's in the middle of campus. It's just the way it's very classic looking. It was good to see a lot of fans. It was a good to see a lot of engaged fans in that game. They're calling them the uh, Wade Wackos, the Wallace Wade Wackos, the counterpart to the Cameron Crazies, the basketball fan base that takes over Cameron Indoor Stadium during basketball season. Just really, really cool to see them um, embracing football. And, and, I, and I am of the belief that the Duke program is trending in the right direction. Mike Elko's got the blueprint, not only to build a winning program, but to build a winning program at a small university that doesn't really have a lot of football history. He did it at Wake Forest as the right-hand man to Dave Clawson as the defensive coordinator before leaving to go to Notre Dame, ironically, for one year and then going to Texas A&M to be the D.C. for Jimbo Fisher before heading to Duke. So I, I have no idea, that, no no doubt, rather, that Mike Elko is going to be able to fashion something very formidable and what he builds is going to be lasting at Duke University. It's going to be a pleasure to watch that grow. Concerned about what happened at NC State, though. Dave Dorn's been there for a decade now. There's not been any significant peaks and there's not been any significant valleys. It's just been very mundane, and that is a hungry fan base. That is a fan base that wants to win and is really twisting when it sees the likes of a Duke and sees the likes of a North Carolina and a Wake Forest, its brethren on the tobacco road of the ACC succeeding in football. I'm wondering how much longer that they'll be able to maintain that at, 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 at NC State to, to – be satisfied with mediocrity. They're having to make the quarterback change this week. Don't forget Brennan Armstrong being benched to transfer from Virginia, who I believe two years ago was arguably the best quarterback in the ACC. Now on the bench, now QB two for the Wolfpack. So it's going to be going to be curious to see how all that plays out. Listen, I got a lot to get to. I've got a blog post coming up. Um, We've got our bandwagoning blog post. It's going to be up on the website. You'll be able to check that out. And then over the weekend, we'll have um, Saturday morning some questions from the Magic 8 Ball with regards to the weekend's games. Um, don't forget, if you do not have the mobile app, download it now. The FanStream Sports mobile app is good for Android as well as iPhone. Remember to hit up the FanStream Sports Facebook page. Give it a like, leave a comment, follow it, whatever. Just engage it. And as always, you can hit me up on Twitter, X. At Scott H4456. Remember, the DMs are open. Let me know what's on your mind. Comments, suggestions, complaints, whatever. Just let me know what you got on your mind. Otherwise, until next time, be safe.